Aloha. And welcome to my channel, All Good Things in All Good Time, where we prefer it if you would do no harm and do no crime. <laughs> where it is always a great day to be alive. I'm so thankful. Life is so good. So I don't know if I've mentioned this, uh, but I happen to have really good luck. And it just, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know how to explain this, but man, I just am so blessed all of a sudden. They have provided a new place for me. And I'm almost done moving everything out of this room and into that um, apartment, which is... I tried to get a place for me and my son, and then they said, no, we can't put you together unless you want to give us money back. And and then they ended up giving me the same place uh, uh, they were trying to find for me and my son for just me. So I have uh, extra room and a full kitchen. And um, man, my life has just gotten really good. <laughs> it's interesting, this 50-inch uh, screen TV has, um, doesn't have cable. I've had cable now for eight months here, old school cable here at the hotel, and that's about to go away, uh, which is cool. Uh, the next place doesn't have cable, but it's got uh, Amazon Prime and um, Max, and uh, I, it also has uh, Netflix and Hulu, but I, I have that already too. But there's a few programs um, that are outside of my ecosystem that I've been interested in watching. And one of them is the show Reacher. And I've been watching that and it's pretty awesome. I can't, I'm just feeling so lucky sitting there watching Reacher in this nice place. I can't even, I mean, when I show it to you, you're not gonna believe it. It's uh, I didn't realize that this place was a little bit depressing uh, until I moved into a place that's the opposite. Um, try not to get too attached because man, everything after this place is gonna be a disappointment. <laughs> Hopefully it'll get extended after next February, but uh, I think I'm in a place until next February. I, at some point I'm gonna need to prove that I'm looking for a place. Uh, and that was like the whole thing, right? You gotta prove that you're looking for a new place to live. But then I just got a call from FEMA today from uh, my, my case manager, the lead on my case manager, this team, whatever. And he, uh, he said, hey, listen, we realize that there are no places. So we don't expect you to be looking for a place. So I'm gonna get my next check-in with them in 60 days. Big difference between worrying about somebody infiltrating your room every day and knowing I have 60 days until someone's gonna to wanna to check in with me and then uh, see where I'm at in my progress and process, uh, which is cool. I mean, man, it's, uh, it's more than I deserve, more than I, um, you know, I, it's, it's nice and, uh, it's going to be hard not to be really happy in this place, even though my house burned down, lost all my stuff and my mom just died and, you know, there's other things to be frustrated about, but, um, for the most part, uh, the reasons to be happy are winning over all the reasons to be less than that. So thank you, God. Thank you, angels. Whoever's, whoever's taking care of me, they're doing a damn good job. Cheers to you. My son is still off on a cruise. He just went to Jamaica though. Smoked some weed in Jamaica with some locals, <laughs> which is a good, you know, cultural experience, but he's just wasting money and uh, he's just living his most selfish life. <laughs> so let's hope he just kind of grows out of that. I don't know, we'll see. Um, I discovered in a little five cup coffee pot that you can cook in it. I cook steaks twice in there. <laughs> you know, like the uh, the melting pot, right? They, uh, you just dip your meat in some liquid. It's uh, some butter, some olive oil, some, some garlic, basil, pepper, and uh, um, making up the liquid and then you just put two uh, put two steaks in that cup and uh, leave it on for an hour and they came out medium tender really good so that suggests that the uh, the temperature in there is about 115 120 which is medium right uh, it's almost like sous vide cooking anyway 
Uh, in case all you ever have is a coffee pot to cook with, you can cook with it. You have to be patient. It's going to take a while because it never really boils. It gets too hot, but it gets pretty hot. And you can do a little bit of stuff with that, like cook some steaks. <laughs> so who knew? I was going to make a video of that, but it's just, I mean, I can just tell you it. It's, I can explain that one. That's easy. Uh, I, I ran into uh, that doorman, Andre, who does wedding videography. He's mastered all aspects of editing and drone flying and video production. And he really likes the idea of helping me. I'm also going to interview him, but then use him to interview others. And uh, when he's not busy working, he's working two other jobs in addition to his his wedding business is I'm sure his wedding business has fallen off and he's you know working hard to support his family I don't think his house burned down he, he was living north of Lahaina town but um, great guy his brother's a great guy his sister's the most beautiful girl in the world one of them uh, Watsuki uh, she was 25 years ago she was the uh, acrobat at our at Ula Lena a, uh, a local uh, show that uh, addressed that had no English spoken in it. It had Hawaiian and other languages, and uh, it told the history of the Hawaiian Islands. And uh, there was a part in there with an acrobat on a tissue, and and that was Watsuki. Anyway, um, his sister's beautiful, and she doesn't live here anymore, but she's just great. And his brother uh, is a jujitsu. Uh, black belt and instructor has been for 20 years on the west side and and andre himself is a brown belt in jiu-jitsu which is cool um but just a really great guy i've known andre since he was 17 16 17 when he started working with me at the hula grill and uh, he just told me uh the other day when i ran into him he said bro i was just thinking about you yesterday see when he was 17 and all throughout my my life and when i'm around younger people that'll listen to me which isn't very often, but he did. He did listen to me, and he still hears my voice in the back of his head. <laughs> when he has, he just started working as a valet, one of his three jobs, and uh, so he's he's taking in cash, right? And I used to tell him, man, listen, after work, go straight to the bank, deposit everything except for what you need for lunch the next day, right? Get it out of your possession. And uh, he said, man, I was thinking about you. Started, I started valet parking, getting cash again. And I was thinking, I got to do like Craig says, go straight to the bank, deposit that money. <laughs> love that. I love the idea that I might actually have some positive influence on somebody somehow, somewhere, some way. And uh, when it comes back around like that, I love it. I love it. So that is uh, Dre, Andre. Well, Offer Geld is his last name. Great guy, man. If you need to do a wedding videography here in Maui, Andre Offergeld. I'm sure you can find him in the internet. Uh, it's kind of funny. I've been noticing there's these um, there's these comedians that do Gen X humor. I, I, it's just a whole other uh, subject matter that I realized, oh, yeah, I could do that too. So mine's going to be crazier than any of the ones I've been hearing so far. I've been hearing the ones where, oh, uh, when I was a kid, we used baby oil for sunscreen, and, uh, oh, we sat in the back of a station wagon looking backwards with no seatbelt on and all this stuff, you know? It's like, okay, where's the story of the, uh, you know, the 11-year-old that started drinking and smoking weed, <laughs> or the, the teenager that smoked crack in the 80s? <laughs> The <coughs> the uh, the enormous amount of cocaine that was in in my high school in the eighties, uh, yeah. There's a lot of stories. So the time I took my parents' cars cars out joyriding when I was, I stole my parents' cars and drove around when I was fourteen. Uh, and then, yeah, and story after story. I got stories. I got stories. I had a my crazy bipolar. I love love her. She was she had a good heart, but she uh, she really. She uh, she was a manic depressive bipolar person and she was really great at just yelling and screaming and pushing away everyone that ever wanted to help her and take care of her. And it's, it, it just, 
it just made her life really hard and, and, and pushed away everyone and anyone that would have wanted to care for her or help her, which, you know, there were many along the way. Um, and, uh, yeah, unfortunately my sister passed away before my mom, so my mom had to experience losing her daughter after a tough life. But my mom was just so amazing at being, um, accepting and, and, and answering her calls and helping her perpetually, continually, even after all the abuse and insults that were hurled her way by her daughter, my mom was still there for, for my sister. Um, and that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, anyway, uh, next subject, Kerrville, Texas. So, uh, when this solar eclipse happened, Kerrville, Texas was, a uh, you know, a place that was um, highlighted. And I have a story from there. When I was riding a bicycle across the United States of America, uh, I w pulled into Kerrville, uh, outside of San Antonio, I believe. Um, and uh, I needed a little bit of money. And at that time, the, um, the bank systems had just been connected uh, relatively recently. The ATM machines, right? The star system, uh, um, what are some of the other ones? Anyway, the, the star system and all the other little networks that uh, all the ATMs um, were joined together with. Uh, you, you'd see all the little symbols on the top of the ATM. Anyway, I'm at an ATM getting out 40 bucks so I can survive. Um, living off of a, a little over a hundred, hundred and sixty dollars a week was my, was my budget. Um, and this nice couple pulls up to use the ATM, but they they really want to talk to me. And uh, he is a janitor at the local hospital. She is an elementary school teacher teaching kindergarten, first grade. They have two little kids. Um, and they immediately go from asking me how I'm doing, where I started, where I'm going. And then they said, hey, come stay at our house. So I said, okay. So they put me up in like their playroom, you know, which is sort of like outside, but not really... Not really in the house, but not really outside. You know, it was the room that had no heat or whatever that was like, you know, a playroom, uh, an added on room. And uh, that was so cool. But what was memorable, really interesting, was these this nice couple. He had a beard and and uh, was a little bit of a hippie, but they had a, a poster that was like a hippie peace loving poster from 1967, right? but it was for World War I, right? It was this interesting antique on their wall, um, a peace a peace poster um, that could have easily come out of the 60s, but it was, you know, made in 1916. Anyway, something I'll never forget, a nice couple from Kerrville. Maybe someone in Kerrville uh, is thinking, oh, I think I know that couple, <laughs> right? Because they're probably still there. Their kids are now um you know in their 30s and they are both now in their uh 60s probably a really good couple anyway that's Kerrville to me um so i'm excited because now that i just found out i'm not going to be harassed for 60 days that means i can take a road trip and i really want to take a road trip um and this time it won't be with my either my kids so I can just sleep on couches or in my car and not spend any money on rooms because um, I don't want to spend and I don't have it to spend. I mean, I could spend it, but then it's just money I'll never get back. So, um, but I want to do a big road trip and drive all over the Western states, maybe as far up to Malta, Montana, maybe see my grand great grandpa's grave up there. Maybe go visit Russellville, Arkansas, where my um, my mom's Hamilton family goes back, and there's gravestones there that will help me retrace my family history, which I lost in the fire. I did should have taken a picture of that. I had all the work done on paper, and it all burned up. And so, anyway, um, there's several Hamiltons that uh, are buried in Russellville. So, love to find that. Love to get. To, I got to go to. Marin General Hospital, get my birth certificate, 
I'd like to go to UC Berkeley and go to the library and see if I could see my grandfather's cartoons, which I've never seen, take pictures of all of them if I could. Um, you know, the guy that made all these movies was also a cartoonist. Um, and, um, and then visit friends, um, my buddy John and Yervon and, and Jay and uh, Morris and, uh, and the other, my other brother, John, <laughs> and my brother, Jim, and my other brother, Jim. And yeah, there's just a lot of guys I'd love to say hello to. Um, and a few friends, parents, love to love to stop in on my, my good buddy, Colin Watanabe's parents, say hello to them, June and Aki. Just amazing people. I would love to interview them, love to get their story from their mouths about getting locked up in concentration camps in World War II. That's pretty interesting. So, and I, I would love to try to prepare for and, and, and follow through on doing Ragbri, a ride across Iowa, which seems like it would be a great time. Love to get a buddy to do it with me, but I think I could do it by myself by driving to the next town and then riding halfway back until I meet, and then, you know, like, instead of doing the ride, because it goes from one town to one, the next town to the next town, so you gotta, like, leave a car behind, right? Or not. So instead of leaving a car behind, I think I'll just ride back towards the people riding towards me, and then turn around when I get to them, and then ride with them back to the town, and then whoop it up, and then drive to the next town ahead of everybody. Um... Anyway, that's how I'm imagining doing Ragbrat. A seven day rolling party across Iowa. Um, if you never heard of it, it's pretty cool. If you ever meet someone from Iowa, just bring that up. It'll make you seem real cool. And if any of you politicians ever want to win an Iowa caucus, I recommend you do Ragbrat. That would get you in pretty good with them locals. I'll tell you what. Um, what else? What else? Uh... The Republican Party continues to just disgrace itself every day. It's so sad. <laughs> they do the dumbest shit every day. Well, my favorite thing about Republicans is uh, how their eyes are always either too far apart or too close together. Like Marjorie Trader Scream. Marjorie Trader Scream, her eyes are way too close together. Lauren Boebert, way too close together. <laughs> Justice Thomas, too far apart. Uh, Eileen Cannon, way too far apart. <laughs> Uh, Ted Cruz, way too close together. Hey, would it be inappropriate to call the piece of shit governor, traitor of Texas, spineless? Would that be rude? <laughs> oh, dumb shit. Oh, how about stupid Republicans in Arizona uh, bringing back abortion laws to 1864 <laughs> when it was a territory and only men could vote? Oh my God. And now Florida, Florida is, uh, just, uh, inflicted a six week ban on abortions for women, making them on their lives dangerous and unsafe, right? Killing women, right? There's no babies being safe. There's no pro-life aspect to the anti-abortion people. It's pro-death. It's just stupidity, right? Cause they do everything the opposite. They do pro-death and then they call themselves pro-life and they act like there's some sort of morality there and there's no morality there. At all. It's just absurd. It's sad. It's sad what um, what is going on. But check it out. In Florida, the same time as the evil and corrupt uh, Supreme Court that doesn't represent uh, America at all, doesn't understand America, all lot, any of the Republican Supreme Courts, but in Florida, they did allow the codification of women's rights to an abortion to be voted upon in November, and they're going to allow a vote on the legalization of marijuana in Florida. So here's what's going to happen. In Florida, women are going to come out to vote in droves. Women are going to take America back, right, without stupid fucking testosterone fucking up their heads, right? Thank you, women. You are the majority. And the pot smokers are going to register and come out to vote, right? And uh, the combination of those two things are going to crush Republicans in the state of Florida. You heard it here. It's obvious. It's going to happen. Oh, my God. It's so great. It just happened in freaking Ohio. 
58% of the population voted for both those things. So, um, yeah. And then, oh, how about the news about the, uh, the Republican uh, parents that raised their kids to kid to be a mass shooter and then bought him a gun to do it. Three days before he murdered kids at high school, these fucked up Trump supporters bought their kid a fucking gun. Piece of shit traitors. Yeah, because, you know, they're the good guys with the guns. Yeah. Oh, it's so stupid. It's just ignorance. The crumblies. Yeah, going to jail like they deserve. Then there's the other Republican parents that are in the news. Uh, Lori and Chad Daybell. Uh, religious freaks. Um, yeah, going to jail for murdering their children. Because they thought their children had the devil in them. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're voting for the devil. Donald Trump. His red hair, red face, right? We all know red hair people have no soul. Just kidding, just kidding. I know I said that before. <laughs> but, I mean, it's just so fitting that uh, the devil incarnate that's led all the Christians to hell, uh, he, he's obviously, you know, red face, red hair. I mean, I bet he's even got a couple horns up there. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah, I wish Republicans would stop giving me stuff to talk about, right? If they could just become, like, smart, right? If Republicans were smart, here's what they'd do. They'd say, oh, you know what, Al Gore, you were right. The Earth is getting fucked up, and we got to stop saying that there's nothing wrong with the planet, right? Because that's just stupid ignorance, <laughs> right? Ignorant fools, and somehow they're getting young people to vote for them. The people who are saying there ain't no such thing as... Bad weather associated with the climate change and associated with our behavior as human beings, right? Pure ignorance. Then there's, uh, mm, let's see, uh, flooding the streets with guns, right? The dumbest shit you ever heard was someone saying, uh, best way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. Yeah, we need more guns to be more safe. Yeah, more deadly weapons. That's what's going to make us, yeah, I got an idea. Why don't we just hand out grenades to everybody, right? Because those will make us even safer, Right? And uh, bazookas. We should all have bazookas, you know? Because the uh, best thing to stop a, a bad guy with a bazooka is a good guy with a bazooka, right? Oh, it doesn't make sense? Right. Because it don't make sense. <laughs> Ignorant fools. Uh, God, if I was president, I would separate church and state completely. There would be not one penny going to any religious anything. That, when George Bush got in office and he started putting money into Christian bullshit, Oh, it's just started fucking up the world, and now look at what we got, right? And we need to chart, we need to tax churches, and tax nonprofits. This shit where they don't get audited, they don't pay any taxes, they're not responsible for all their corrupt fucking bullshit. No. The way do we make sure we, religions and corrupt nonprofits actually do good is by taxing them, taking that money and doing good with it, right? And so, um,. Yeah, it's just crazy, man. Religion, spirituality is, is alive and well. Belief in the Almighty, the uh, um, a, something, a, a, a power higher than yourself, uh, the old, this God, that God, they're all the same. All the major religions uh, pray to the same God. Um, and they're all monotheistic, and they all are the same God, even though they all hate each other. And that really is what's killed religion, right? When religions promote all this hate and hate each other and murder each other and, and you see people on the street thinking that they're better than you because they're a true believer, but you're not. <laughs> These true believers who uh, look down on people. Yeah, I don't think Jesus would have wanted you to look down on people. We got this piece of shit out here on the road. He stands there with a sign saying, I am Jesus or whatever, big cross, he just stands there, never worked a day since he's moved here, just a vagrant who moved to the west side, who sits on the side of the road, claiming to be a Jesus follower, right, with a, you know, donate money here to me, and the guy's never worked a day, Jesus was a fucking carpenter, he worked his, he worked a hard day's work, if this guy wants to show that he's, wants to be Jesus-like, he could go get a job in our town, but instead he sits on the side of the road and just waits for tourists to pull over and say, oh, 
Yes, can I give you some money? Thanks for promoting Jesus. Oh, it's just gross. It's gross. Anyway. All right. Love you guys. Thanks for your patience. Uh, wait till you see my next place. It's unbelievably nice. It's too good. And I am just enjoying the hell out of being on prepare food for the first time. It's amazing. Meanwhile, my son, hopefully they won't kick him out in the next 48 hours. He comes back in 48 hours. I'm supposed to be out of here today. And um, I just want to make sure that they don't try to turn the room over um, while no one's here for the next 36 hours. So it's it's a weird situation, precarious. I wish he never went on a stupid vacation. But um, anyway, thanks for watching. All good things and all good time. If you're thinking about doing harm or crime, I suggest you do less today. Do nothing. Sit on the couch. Enjoy doing nothing and, and being happy. See, happiness, true happiness is a clean conscience, okay? That's all it is, is a clean conscience, right? That's why I know I would be a good politician because I cannot be bribed. <laughs> I value a good night's rest and a clean conscience more than any amount of money. No amount of money. No amount. A hundred billion dollars isn't enough to ruin your life with a dirty conscience, right? <laughs> These stupid... People in positions where they just do one dishonest or corrupt thing after another, whether it's, you know, Supreme Court Justice Uncle uh, Th Thomas, Uncle Thomas, uh, <laughs> or any of these horrible Supreme Court justices that were put in there by completely corrupt means, pretending to be on the side of God when they're really just devil worshipers. And we know that Trump's the devil. These fools are worshiping. They're going to get to the gates of hell. And God's going to be like, yeah, I gave you a brain. You're the dumb motherfucker that chose not to use it. You stupid fucking traitors. <laughs> Following the devil around. Sending the devil money. Paying for the devil's legal fees. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. Anyway, um, love you guys. If you want to have a really great life, just don't put nothing up your nose. Don't pop pills. Don't hang out with violent people. Don't drive drunk. Uh, what else? And stay out of the wrong relationships. Maybe cover your skin in the sun. Don't be stupid like these dumb tourists that come out here and just turn themselves into lobsters. And then they just, and then they're uncomfortable their whole time here. My God, wear a hat, wear long sleeves. Get in and out of the water. Enjoy some incidental sun, but don't lay in the sun. I can't believe there's still stupid people laying in the sun. Oh, and these evil Republicans coming here. The women who vote against women's rights are just abhorrent, disgusting people. Oh, and the Jews. You realize, okay, there used to be these things called... Um, these horrible people called uh, skinheads, you know, white inferiorists, uh, certainly inferior people with their, their skinheads and their hatred towards Jews and their hatred towards blacks and their hatred towards Mexicans and interracial marriage, right? And now we have a new word for these skinheads. We call them Republicans. <laughs> so if you're a Jew, why would you want to vote to align yourselves with the Nazis in America. That's just weird. Or blacks wanting to, right, align themselves with the KKK. My, my mom's not in the KKK. Not all Republicans are in the KKK, but 100% of the people in the KKK, they're all Republicans. Not all Republicans are Nazis, but 100% of the Nazis, all the Nazis, there are 150% of them, they're all Republicans, devoted to, and they're gonna vote, right? Anyway, it was kind of funny how Trump went out and said the opposite. Oh, you'd be crazy if you were a Jew that voted for a Democrat. No. 